Hallelujah. I just got some worship in my spirit. Is that all right? I will bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. I will, I will bless the Lord, oh my, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. For he has done, for he has done great things. If you know it, sing it. He has, he has done great things. He has done great. He has done great things. Bless his Everybody name. Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Now let's praise him. Everybody say bless, bless, say bless, bless, say bless, bless, say bless, say it again, say bless, bless, are you blessed, bless, say bless, bless, we're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed, blessed in the city, we're blessed in the, when we come, For the devil is, the devil is we are, we are blessed. Everybody say bless, 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 say bless. bless. I can't hear you, bless, 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 bless. say bless. bless, say it like you mean it, bless, 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 bless. say bless. bless, bless. Everybody say bless, bless, bless. We're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed. Blessed in, in the, the city, city. Hey. we're blessed in the field when we come. We're blessed we can down every stronghold sick in the same poverty must for the be. devil is for the devil is defeated we are blessed late in the midnight hour hey. god's gonna turn it around he's gonna work in your favor everybody help me say say late late in the midnight hour say god come on y'all he's gonna work he's gonna work in your favor yes he will say Say God, it's gonna work. It's gonna work in your favor. Yes, it 
wheels. I'm telling you, late. Late in the midnight hour. Say God. Gonna turn around, uh, and around, 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 Late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. He's going to work in your favor. If you believe it, say, say, late. Late in the midnight hour, I say, God, God's going to turn it around. It's going to work. He's going to work in your favor. Yes, it will. Say, late. Late in the midnight hour, say, God, God's going to turn it around. It's going to work. He's going to work in your favor. Yes, he will. Say, late. late uh, say God. I'm gonna turn it around. And around. And around. And around. And around. Say around. And 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 around. He's going to turn it around. And around. And around. And around. And around. And around. And around. Listen, listen. I'm living in the overflow. I'm living in the overflow, you said. I'm living in the overflow. I'm living in the overflow. You can't say it if you don't believe it. I'm living. I'm living in the overflow. I'm living in the overflow. Anybody living? I'm living in the overflow. I'm living in the overflow. Hey, anybody living? I'm living in the overflow. I'm living in the overflow. Living in the overflow. I'm living in the overflow. I'm living in the overflow. Living in the overflow. I'm living in the overflow. Oh, I'm living. I'm living in the overflow. I'm living in the overflow. He's gonna turn it around, 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 and around, and around, and around, and around, and around. Already turned it around, and around, and around, and around, and around, and around. We're blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed. When we come, when we go, we cast out every stronghold sickness and poverty. For the devil is, for the devil is, for the devil is defeated, 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 the devil is defeated, the devil is defeated, the devil is defeated. We are, we are blessed. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Good morning, Annie. Good morning. God is good, amen. Man. Yeah. All the time, and I know I'm right. <laughs> All the time, God is good. Yeah. It's just a blessing to be back in the house again and just to give the Lord some praise. Amen. Even though to all that's going on in the midst, we still got to be able to praise God for his goodness. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you know, sometimes we go through some things that at the start of it, we don't see the blessing. But as we travel through it, all the heartache and hurt and all that we go through, at the end, we find ourselves saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you. This morning, I just want to say to you, let's thank him in advance. Let's thank him in advance. Thank you, Lord. Let's not no more have to see something before we say thank you. With all that's going on, let us be able to say thank you, Lord. Yeah, those that can. And we're going to do it for the ones that can't. We want to be, be able to stand in the gap for them and be able to stand up and shout and say thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. It'll be a time to come when I won't be able to say thank you 
But I want my church family to be able to stand and say, thank you, Lord. Yeah. God is a good God. And just the support, thank you, Lord. He allowed our pastor to walk back in the church on a Sunday morning. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, God is good all the time. Thank you. In the midst of storms, he's so good because he always show you a streak of goodness even in the midst of a storm. And I got so much going on and he walks our pastor right back up in the house on a Sunday. Thank you, Lord. God is good. God is good. You can focus on the bad things all the time. The bad things are just made to keep you down. It's made to just keep a frown on your face. It's made you to see when something good come in your life, you take it for granted because you're not in a accepting spirit. You're not even able to accept the goodness of God. We need to be in the spirit all the time of accepting the goodness of God. God has been good to you. He's been good. Don't sleep on his goodness. Yeah, he's blessed Antioch. He's blessed your home. He's blessed your relationships. He's blessed your sicknesses, your illnesses. He blessed your finances. Yeah. Yeah. He blessed us on this weekend even to get out and serve in our community. That's a blessing. I'm glad that I can be a giver and not so much begging all the time. It's good to be able to give. Don't take it for granted. God is a good God. Don't know what he's going to do in this service this morning, but I'm going to give him praise in advance. Thank you, Lord. Marla's going to bring the word. I'm already, thank you, Lord. I don't have to wait to see what she gonna do. I don't have to wait to see what text she coming from. I'm gonna say, thank you, Lord. God is good. Just get so excited in his goodness. Not my goodness, in his goodness. On this morning, we just wanna thank you for being here. We thank God for your coming out and praising God with us on this Sunday morning. We know the season. We know it's Christmas coming on. We know it's a lot going on. It's the most stressful this month to go through, they say. But I always knowing the God that I know, I ain't going to stress about it. I'm going to let Christmas do what it do. Because Christ had already paid the price and done it all. I'm going to say thank you in advance. Thank you. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. So again, we just want to say thank you for coming on this morning. Hoping that something be said to you that will enrich your week. Bless you and keep you. Yeah. Just a word of prayer. Father God, oh, how we thank you. We thank you, Father God, for thinking of us first. We thank you, Father God, because we know it's nothing that we've done so great to deserve it. It's just your mercy and your grace that keeps us moving, keeps us going, taking another step, one foot in front of the other. It's a lot of times, Father God, we, 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 want, we want to stop. But it's just your goodness to keep us pushing, keep us moving. Yeah, we thank you, Father God, that you're a God of love, a God of patience, a God of giving. Yeah. We thank you. 
We thank you, Father God, for all that's going to happen here today. We thank you, Father God, for all that you do. Father God, we just give you all the praise and all the glory. We ask, Father God, if it's a word that someone needs to hear, that they hear it, their hearts be open to hear it and receive it. And Father God, that they become all that you would have them be. Father God, we thank you. We thank you, Father God. We give you praise right now for all that's going to happen here this morning. Bless every family that is here. You know all about everything that's going on in these families. All we ask, Father God, you keep your hand up on them and keep them. Bless them is all we can say. Father God, we careful, be, we'll be careful to give you all the praise and glory for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. <laughs> good morning, Antioch. Good morning. God is good. We're so glad to see everyone here this morning. Um, what I want to do first is uh, this is the third Sunday, so we're going to recognize our uh, December birthdays. So we're asking if you had a birthday in the month of December, would you please stand? Raise your hand. <laughs> Everybody? Everybody? Okay. We're gonna we have would you remain standing, please? We have some people in position to pass our birthday cards, I hope. Where are we? Okay. Do we have any back here? No. Oh, one back here. He'll get you. Okay. Let us sing happy birthday while they're distributing the cards. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Everybody. Happy birthday to one back there. Did we get a card? You did get a did everybody get a card? Right here in the center. Okay, there's the other one right there. In the center of the earth right there. Okay, thank you. At this time, we would like to uh, also welcome our visitors. If you're visiting with us, we didn't have any register at the Courtesy Committee, but if you're visiting with us this morning, would you please stand? Amen. All visitors, please stand. Okay, starting right over here, could we have your... Mother Berlene Smith. Glad to have you. Okay. Dan and Estella Benson. We're certainly glad to have you. I'm sorry. Okay, good to have you. Okay, Annie, I think that was all. Did I miss anyone? Okay, if I didn't miss anyone, Antioch, we know what we do at this time. Let us stand and welcome our visitors because we know that the Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. Jesus in me, see the Jesus in you. The Jesus in me, see the Jesus in you. So easy. Praises 
praises go up. When praises, praises go, go up, up, blessings, blessings come down. Said the praises, praises go up, blessings come down. So easy. So
I am grateful to God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and my big brother, Jesus Christ. I humbly bow to knee of my heart, requesting that you do not destroy me because of my iniquities. The poet said, God does not treat us as our sins deserve. And truly, I have sinned, and I'm trying not to, but I keep on every now and then.
Born of a mother child, Mary, chosen mother, and Joseph as his father. Three wise men travel. They were guided by star. Truly, Jesus, and he lay in a manger in the hay. He, angels, angels, born of a virgin, Mary. Joseph as mother, Joseph as his earthly father, three wise men traveling from afar, they were guided by the Holy Star to heat and Jesus made in a manger filled with hay. Omega, the beginning, the end, Jesus, he's my friend. It is such a blessing to be before you. 
on our on third Sunday, I just thank God for our senior adults. Amen. Amen. Our text this morning is coming from Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. And we are going to begin, we're going to read this morning in verses 26 through 38. And when you get there, if you would, just say amen. 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 Verse 26. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to, Na uh, to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, greetings, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. And the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who has said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. And I'm going to talk just for a brief moment about paying the price to fulfill the purpose. May we pray. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you, God, for everyone that is in this place today. I pray, Lord God, that you will bless the word, that you've already blessed the word. I pray that you will go with us to receive the word. Have your way in this message today, Lord God. May you use me as an instrument. I bow down and give of myself freely unto you, that you may be edified in this place today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. This morning, I want to talk about Joseph and Mary, two people who had an amazing relationship with God, a love-filled relationship that produced the greatest gift given to humankind in Jesus Christ. Parents who trusted God's purpose for their lives. However, Joseph, Mary, and God's relationship had its fair share of fear, hesitancy, and even heartache. It's no different from our relationship with God. But today I'm talking about all of us that are in this space. Yes, sir. 
I'm sorry. Pray with me. <laughs> but it was Josie and Mary's connectedness with God, their obedience, trust, faith, and admiration, and love for God that allowed them to be obedient and fulfill the purpose of God. I often wonder if we really connect with God, if we really connect with God's love for us even when it's hard, when it's complicated, when illogical things happen. I honestly believe that our inability to connect with God's love for us through our obedience to him and trust in him and faith in him and admiration for what he has already done for us. And just the simple love that we have for God yes, sir. Yes, is releasing kryptonite into our purpose. Our inability to do this is releasing a substance into our relationship with God that weakens our ability to get to our purpose. See, I want us to know that when we do not connect deeply with God's love in our life and on our journey, it creates a distance. And within that distance, all sorts of things tend to happen. Fear tends, it tends to happen. Anxiety, depression, a longing to just be longing, despair, feelings of being unloved and unappreciated. Simply feelings of hopelessness. So today, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to all of us who are in that space. To all of us who have been in that space. For some of us, they go back and forth in that space. And for those of us who are on the brink of entering into this space. My brothers and sisters, the space does not allow us to see God's sincere love for us. Because it is in that space that it just does not feel like love. The space shifts our focus from the miraculous things God is doing in our lives. And he's doing some miraculous things. We're here this morning, right? Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. And narrows that focus that when we become compelled and overwhelmed by it, we tend to, within our own strength, try to fix it. Now, in our text this morning, there are a couple of miraculous, there are a few miraculous events happening. Elizabeth, at an older age, becomes pregnant, and some scholars argue that she was up in age of about 88 years. The angel appears to a virgin Mary who was engaged to Joseph. Angel tells Mary she is favored and will become pregnant with the son. Although startled, confused, and maybe even fearful, Mary commits to walk in her purpose. Joseph agrees to move forward with marrying Mary, even though she is already pregnant. Amen. And then the story goes on to the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, the way I just said all of this to you is the way we embrace this scripture as the Christmas story. It is something that we know. But today, I want us to relate to the significance of God's love in this story based on the scripture that we know. As one of my co-workers said to me on Thursday, I want to have a weighted conversation with you this morning. Yeah, yeah. See, all of these miraculous events, God set up beautifully. 
He set it up beautifully by allowing Elizabeth to have a baby, be impregnated with the baby at the age of 88. A miracle, a miracle for all to see the wonders of God. It is not possible to doubt God experiencing such a miracle. When God allows miraculous events in our lives by turning unfortunate events, her having to wait 88 years to become pregnant, and to miraculous events, we should never doubt. God has a way of turning things around. No matter how long you have to wait, the condition you are in when you receive it, and no matter what someone else may think about it, be jealous about it, or have some concerns with it because God's word never fails. God allowed this miraculous event for Elizabeth to ensure Mary that his gifts are unlimited. That there is absolutely nothing that God cannot do. Then God sends the angel Gabriel to Mary to tell her, you are favored by the Lord. The Lord is with you. Church, every time God heals you, every time God delivers you, every time God sets you free from physical and emotional prisons, every time God restores a broken heart, it's favor Amen. because the Lord is with you. As Mary, sometimes God's favor can startle us, cause us to doubt and have the urge for the details. A couple of weeks ago, I was in the grocery store and I, I ran into one of my oldest daughter's friends and I hadn't seen her in years, and I remember her getting married at an early, er, er, an early age. I, I want to say she was around 23 years old, but I, I ran into her at the grocery store, and she gave me the biggest hug, and she said, oh, Miss Mayberry, I got something that I want to tell you. And I said, okay. So I scooted over and pushed my little basket in and leaned against the aisle to get out of the way of traffic. And she said, you know I got married when I was 23 years old, and she said, um, the very next year, my husband and I were given the unfortunate news that I would never have a child at the age of 24. And um, she said, me and my husband, we were just about to get to the point to where we could accept that. But on this day, right before I came to the grocery store, and it's just amazing that you was the first person I seen, I want you to know that I, I went to the doctor and he said uh, that not only was I pregnant, but that I was 18 weeks pregnant. And in two or three weeks, I can even know the sex of my baby. And I just got chills all over my body. But then she said something interesting. She said, but what I want to know is, how did that happen? I mean, you're the mother of five daughters. How in the world could something like that happen? I was told I was barren. So how is it that I'm now at 28 years old pregnant? And all I could say to her, all I could say to her is, baby, it's favor. I told her, don't worry about how it happened. Just know that God is with you. 
Do not be afraid and certainly do not doubt. For God is now entrusting in you a gift. And this baby is a wonderful part of your purpose. Oh, God often do things that we just don't understand. Can you imagine how Mary must have felt when the angel Gabriel was telling her that not only about being pregnant, but how blessed and wonderful her son would be. And she is a virgin. <coughs> Whenever God allows you to peek into the greatness that he has for you, it does not always feel logical or doable. It may feel hard. It may feel scary. And you may even feel like you're not even equipped. But I want to encourage you to take a hold of that favor. Take hold of that favor and step into your calling. My brothers and sisters, all God needs is for us to be willing to walk it out. All God needs is our willingness to walk. He will do the rest. It is time that we stop allowing our current condition to hold us up from fulfilling our purpose. It is time to stop allowing our current condition yes, yes. to hold us up from fulfilling our purpose, Amen. to allow our current condition to make us disconnect because the love of God is just so, so big. Yes, yeah. And because the process can be so, so painful. Becoming ill is uncomfortable, it's painful, and it even may cause us to fear. Yes, sir. Yet God raised us from some sick beds. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. God delivered us from in the courtroom. God removed the taste of drugs and alcohol from our mouths and our systems. God brought some wayward children home. God put food on some empty tables and clothes on our backs. God has restored some broken homes and he's healed some broken hearts. It is God's way of letting us know that there is nothing, nothing impossible for him. So it's okay to be a little startled. It's okay to be doubtful. And it's okay to have favor. As long as you continue to walk with God. See, walking with God, that's the relationship. Walking with God accepts the things that we cannot change and that we cannot see. Walking with God is being faithful. Walking with God is trusting him. And walking with God you are participating in a relationship with the creator. The creator who loves you. When God created us, he didn't have to. He sent, he sent Jesus because he knew we needed him. That is his gift to us. His love for us. 
And as his earthly mother and father, Jesus answered the call. Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice. Getting through to your purpose, getting through to our purpose is a sacrifice. Everything God gives us in our hands to do is a sacrifice. Marriage is a sacrifice. Singleness is a sacrifice. Raising children is a sacrifice. Working the job that you know you don't like is a sacrifice. Your work in the church is a sacrifice. Navigating through brokenness to be whole for someone else is a sacrifice. How many of us are accepting our call? How many of us are telling God that we will be obedient and walk with him through everything he gives us through our experiences? How many of us connect with God in a way of sure trust and not justification, fear, and doubt? When we resist God in our life, Because of our experience, we disconnect. And it slows down our process to our purpose. Mary and Joseph had many times, I'm sure, that they disconnected. We all do. But they never stopped walking with God. And trusting him in all things. Even though the pain they must have felt all the way to the cross was simply unbearable. I'm sure as they watched Jesus die on the cross, they probably felt that all hope was lost. They probably had never up until that point felt or experienced such pain. They may have even thought about giving up. But Jesus' journey on this earth was not about Mary or Joseph. It was much, much bigger than that. I know in our deepest pain, it feels like it is ours to bear. But someone needs to see us bearing some crosses. They need to see us being restored. They need to see us in love with God regardless of our situation. Dedicated to our purpose no matter the price. So that they can bear their crosses. Jesus did not stay in that grave. He defeated death for you and for me. God's word never fails. Participating in our relationship with God is a choice. When you choose God, you do not lose. Because his word never fails fails. When bad times come, and they will, God will walk with you. God will comfort you. God will put people in your place, in place for you. God will guide you, restore, and confirm. But you have to choose. And when you choose, you must participate. I don't know of a relationship that's easy. As a matter of fact, when I told my grandmother that I was getting married, she said to me, I hope you've asked yourself 
if this is someone that you can go through troubles with and still love. Now, at 21 years old, I had no idea what my grandma was talking about. But today, I know that she was talking about the sacrifice. Today, I know she was talking about the unconditional love. Today, I know she was talking about pressing through with each other in good times and bad. Today, I know she was encouraging me to trust God, have faith in God, stand on the promises of God. God loved us so much. God loved us so much. That he gave his only son to give us direction, hope, and salvation. Participate in the relationship as Martha and Joseph with all the miraculous events they experienced. We have a purpose. We have work to do. Things to go through to get there. Just don't give up. A friend of mine lost her son. He died. And I went by her house to check on her. And she was walking through the house, clapping her hands. And she was thanking Jesus. She said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. She was just walking through the house, clapping her hands. She showed up at the church. She climbed out of the, the, the car. And she was clapping her hands, and she was thanking God. And the entire funeral service, she was standing with her hands stretched wide and her head back. And she was just praising God. She was just rocking side by side, just praising God. And then when she got outside the church, she started clapping her hands again, and she was thanking God. All you could hear her say was, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's all she could say. In the morning of her son, she was participating in her relationship with God. In the morning of her son, who was shot down by his own cousin, she was participating. She was participating in her relationship with God. She never wavered. Her testimony almost 15 years later is one of restoration, loving memories, and a continued relationship with God. Jesus already paid the price. Church, I am so grateful today that he loved us so much. That he gave his only son. And I just want to wrap it up and say that choosing to participate in the relationship with him will give you, will give us, eternal life. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The doors of Antioch Baptist Church is always open. And this morning, if you feel led to participate in your relationship with God, you may not have quite understood is just something that's pulling you. Trust it and give your life to Christ today. Or if you find yourself needing prayer this morning, you are welcome to come down at this time for prayer.
Church. Good morning. Uh, we have Robert Williams. Would you stand, please? He's asking the church for prayer this morning, Amen. and we will be in prayer for you. Amen. 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 God is good. Amen. All the time. Let's thank God for our pastor, Marla Mayberry. Man. What a word. Yes. We all struggle yes, sir. with walking out our plan. Walking out the not our plan, God's plan yes, right. for us. We all have a fight with that. Why me? I'm not good enough. I'm not strong. Whatever it be. Yes. But that's a good message. Walk out your plan. Walk it out. Amen. Amen. We thank you. God is a good God. Yes, I'm here to do the altar call this morning. 
uh, just a word and, and just supporting what's already be, been said from John 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. Amen. 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 Let your light shine. Amen. Let us come to the altar. If you have any uh, concern, any prayer, we didn't get any requests this morning, but I know you may have something on your heart, and we all want to we want to be in prayer as a church family for you. That's right. Amen. I want to remember a young man to come down, Mr. Williams. Yes, sir. We're in prayer for you, man. We're going to pray with you right now as a church family. We don't know what's going on. We don't have to know. God is a good God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Your way, Lord God. Father God, once again, we just come to you just as humble as we know how. First of all, Father God, we would not, wouldn't go any farther without saying thank you. Thank you, Father God, for all that you do. Thank you, Father God, for us, your people. Thank you, Father God, for your saw faults, but you knew what it was that we needed. And it was you. We thank you, Father God, for saving us. We thank you for how you keep us. We thank you, Father God, after you give us chance after chance after chance again. Father God, we wouldn't have wanted any other way but how it is that you deal with us. Father God, we thank you for how you teach us your ways. Father God, we thank you for how you make us better people. We thank you for your patience, Father God. We thank you, Father, that you never forgive us. You forgive up on us, Father. We thank you, Father God, how you teach us how to press toward the mark, Father. Father God, we ask your blessings, Father God, on Mr. Williams on today. We thank you for his coming. Father God, you know all that concerns him, Father God, in his life and what it is you're doing with him. Father God, we ask a special prayer on the day. You wrap your arms around him. Father God, let him know that you love him. Let him know, Father God, that he's forgiven. Let him know that he can move. Father God, so we ask this morning that you bless him as he moves toward where you would have him go. Father God, allow him to move and go only in the way you would have him. So give him strength as our prayer, Lord God. Cover him in all his ways. Bless his home, his family, his job. All concerns him, Father God. Bless him. And Father God, we just give you the praise for it right now. We thank you in advance. We don't have to wait and see anything. We thank you right now for what you're going to do with him. Father God, we bless this entire church. We pray for Antioch Baptist Church in this time. Father God, with the loss of our members, our family members. Father God, but we know that you know. Father God, we know your ways are not our ways. Our ways are not your ways, Father God. But we know, Father God, that you will bring it all to an understanding. Well, Father God, we'll be all giving you the praise and saying thank you. Thank you, Lord. Father God, so we ask that you continue to bless these families that are going through these times, Father God. Bless them, wrap your arms around them, Lord God. Keep them, Father God. Let them know that you love them. Let them know 
that you've got a way for them and a direction and guidance for them. Father God, that you love them, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Bless Antioch, Father God. Bless all that are here visiting on the day. Father God, you know every concern. Father God, you know what seems hard in their life and what they're dealing with. Father God, we have some special blessing over those families. Bless them, Lord God, in this Christmas season. We thank you, Father God, that you gave us the biggest blessing that we could ever have. And that's your son that died on the cross for us. That we might have life and life more abundant. So, Father God, on this day, we thank you for the word that went forth. We thank you, Father God, for the pastor that was obedient to share a word. Father God, we ask that the word be embraced in our hearts and our spirits. Father God, and it take us to where it is you would have us go. Bless all that went on here today, Father God. Bless our senior choir, Father God. Through the music that ran through our ears and our hearts and spirits, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for them, Father God. Bless you, Lord God. As we leave here, we just ask that you continue to, to bless. Be with us through this season, Father God. Keep us, Father God, from all hard hurt, harm, hurt, and danger. Yes. Father God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Your sons, your daughters, thank you, Lord. just give you praise for your goodness. Thank you, Lord. thank you how you didn't leave us out, Father God. Thank you, Lord. We give you a special thanks, Father God, for bringing our pastor back to us on the day. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for all you've done, doing with him and doing through him, Father God. Bless him, Lord God. Bless his family, Father God. His wife, Lord. Bless him and keep him is our prayer. We thank you, Lord. Bless every family here today, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This is the time where we come and give our tithes and offering. It's that time. Amen. 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 <laughs> Let's thank God in advance. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. You're now in the hands of the ushers. Now is now the tithe and offering portion of service. May everyone please stand, face the east wall, and may your ushers in the rear. Morning, Heavenly Father, we just thank you once again for allowing us to come into this house, Lord. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for all the many blessings you've bestowed upon us. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day that was not promised to us. 
Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this offering today. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for those who had to give and those who had it not. These are another blessing we ask in our Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. This morning, um, Reverend Phillips is here and join us in service, and I'm going to ask that he come at this time to bring greetings. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Merry Christmas. Amen. There are a couple of things that I wanted to say today, and I'm not going to be long because I know everybody's ready to go. Um, my parents taught me a few things. One was that when you have something good to say, you ought to say it when somebody can hear you and, and, and appreciate it. The second thing that they taught me was that if you don't have money, you can still have manners. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And that if someone has done something good for you or good to you, the right thing to do is say thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so I've come here today to say thank you. Thank you. And thank you to Antioch Baptist Church for allowing us to use your facility for our dinner. Thank you for coming and supporting us yesterday with the praise team and the choir. Yeah. But most of all, I want to thank your pastor, yeah. who I'm claiming is my pastor. Yeah. 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 Because he got up out of his sick bed. Right. And his wife, who was not feeling well, yeah. while he was grieving his nephew, to come and honor me. And I just came to say thank you. And I will never forget it. If there is anything that I can ever do for this pastor and this church, I will drop what I am doing and come and do it. God bless this pastor. God bless this church. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Phelps. Reverend Keyes, I believe you have an announcement for us as well. Okay. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise, Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise Lord. Listen, I just want to say thank you to everybody who showed up for our servant night serving food at the Salvation Army. You guys were awesome. And I really appreciate it. We had a good group, 20 or so people. And uh, God just blessed. And we were singing Christmas carols and stuff that we didn't know the words to, you know. <laughs> something, 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 something. Oh. Yeah. So I want to say thank you to everybody who showed up. I sent out blast texts. And everybody responded uh, in tremendous fashion. So thank you, thank you, thank you for showing up and showing out. Amen. Amen. This is the end of the year. Thank you, Reverend Keys. And um, the tax letters, if you want them, you know, and I'm sure everyone will, the, the forms to complete those so that the church office can give you your tax form are out at the courtesy committee. So please grab one on your way out um, so that you can prepare uh, for what you need to do with your taxes. Today is Gina Johnson. Stand, please. There you go, yeah, I just. Today is Gina's 15th birthday. We love you, Gina, and we hope that this day brings you great joy. Amen. Amen. We thank God for you. I am going to ask the church a couple of things. 
talking about participating with God, we've all had to do that with the many um, unfortunate, um, we've had some deaths this year. And we've, I'm participating in my relationship with God as we mourn the loss of my first cousin, Reverend Dexter Wright. And this Friday at 12 noon, we will funeralize him here at Antioch Baptist Church. So if you are able to attend, we would love to see you as we celebrate his life. Amen. 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 Pastor, is there anything else that you? Okay. If there is nothing else that claims our attention, may we stand. May the grace of God and the spirit of the Holy Spirit rest and rule and abide with us until we meet again. May the church say,